We looked at Daniel 2.21. We found out about that last week. I want to continue this. Go to Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21 and verse 15. Luke 21 verse 15. Amen. Luke 21 15. For I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. God, we thank you that you have brought us into your word and you will give us what is in it by your spirit for your glory in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And amen. All right. Jesus is speaking to the disciples and he's telling them already. He said, look, things are going to start happening. I'm going to go away. I'm going away and and I'm going to send the comforter Uh, And he's going to be in you, not just with you, but you need to understand that things are going to heat up around here and we're moving now uh, to the end of the age. There are going to be things that happen as we move forward and move into the end of the age. And so he's talking about then the time of his departure. And of course, as soon as he leaves uh, and once he ascends into heaven, sits at the right hand of the Father and begins interceding, then everything goes into, into upper, you know, uh, quick speed, you know, goes into quantum leaps here, moving into the dimension of what is going to happen as far as the culmination of the end time. All right. And so he says, look, nations are going to rise against nation. There's things that are going to happen. Don't don't. And he says, I like it. Verse nine he says, when you hear of wars and revolutions, don't be frightened. These things must happen first. But then the end will come. Uh, the end will not come right away. And, and people get all whacked out. I've said this before. They get all whacked out about wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes and all of these natural occurrences and some stuff that's not natural, but, you know, that is the result of interaction of people with, with one another. And people, oh, that's it. You know, yeah, the end times are here. That's it. Jesus is coming. That's it. This, this is it. That's wrong. Hello. Look at what he said. He said, these things must happen. Say they must happen. He said, but the end will not come right away. He clearly said it and everybody misinterprets it. And, and people get all crazy. I, I mean, I remember when I was a little kid, they were doing prophecy conferences. Saying that Jesus was going to come back in the next 15 years. And they were absolutely sure that that was going to happen. I remember I was about eight years old and my mother took me to a... a a conference, a seminar, and it was held at the old Jack Tar Hotel in San Francisco. That, that's, that'd been gone. It became the Cathedral Hill. And anyway, so, and, and I remember it was all about communism and how communism was sweeping in. And man, they, they scared the, 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 the heck out of me, you know? And I was a little kid, and they were showing the maps and everything and how communists were going to take over the world, and America was going to be swallowed, and the great bear and all of this stuff like that represented Russia. And, and you know, this, was the, 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 this is it. This is the end. I'm 68 years old. That's 60 years later. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Don't lose your head. Jesus said, these things got to happen. He said, but that doesn't mean the end is coming. Now, at least not now. He said, but the end will not come right away. You know, a lot of people want to say, leave the word not out and they say, but the end will come right away. No, he said, the end will not come. Then he said, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, kingdom, uh, great earthquakes, famine, pestilence, various places, fearful events, and great signs from heaven. Well, we've been having all that. We've always had all that. This is nothing new. Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun. He said, but before all this, they will lay hands on you, persecute you. So he was talking about the persecution that was going to come on the church by the Romans, 70 AD, and what was going to happen to the disciples, the apostles, and the church of that day. But the fact remains that all these things still continue to happen. Hello. And Jesus still hadn't come yet. So stop looking for the prediction. What did he say to them? He, he said, he, he, they said, when, when's the restoration coming? When, when are you going? When, when is all this going to happen? When, when's the end of the age? And Jesus said, it's not your business. That's not your business. That's not your bit. That's literally what he told them. 
But the church has made it their business to try and figure it out. Isn't that amazing? He said, that's not your business. He said, you do what I tell you. You wait for the Holy Ghost. And when he comes, you'll be my witnesses. That's the most important thing. And then we'll get all this stuff handled. It'll all get worked out. We'll work all this stuff out. The process of time will go like it's supposed to. And then the end will come. So just relax. I wouldn't spend one dime on a prophecy conference. I wouldn't spend one dime on a prophetic book. Not one. Jesus will return. The end of the age. The end of all that. Man, throw that stuff away. Those guys don't know anything. I said they don't know anything. That's all speculation and supposition and assumption. That's all that is. No, Jesus said no one knows. Only the Father. Come to my conference. I'll tell you. Stop it. Stop it. Makes me angry. He says, all this stuff's going to happen. Make up your mind. Not, oh, boy. Verse 15, 14. But make up your mind not to worry. Look at somebody say, make up your mind. He said, make up your mind not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourselves. Because why? He said, this, all this stuff that's going to happen, verse 13, will result in your being witnesses to them. Witnesses of them and to them and about them. Make up your mind not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourselves. Verse 15, for I will give you words in wisdom. I will give. Everybody say give. The word give there means enable. I will enable you. He says, I will give you words. Now, the words, words is things that you speak. So and he said, what is he saying? He said, I'm going to enable you to speak. I will give you words and wisdom. And, of course, we understand that word wisdom, Sophia, S-O-P-H-I-A, superior wisdom. I will give you, I will enable you to speak, watch, with a superior wisdom. Are you all Okay. I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries, and the word none there not just implies any of them, but it also implies never. Wow. Never. So he's telling you that this isn't a temporary thing. This is ne- your adversaries will never be able to what? Your, your adversaries or those who uh, are your opponents will never be able to, to resist you. To resist there means to stand up, go toe-to-toe with you. To resist you, what? Or contradict you. Stand up against you or to oppose you. So he makes then a very, very specific promise. The time of his departure was rapidly approaching. And so he comforts the disciples because he's freaked them out. He knows they're freaked out. He says, don't worry. How many of you know if he says don't worry, he knows that we're going to worry? He's not going to say don't worry if we're not going to worry. So he says don't worry. I know you won't worry, but don't worry. Relax. Okay? But don't worry. So he's got this issue of having to deal with their worry aspect, their anxiety. And so he comforts them with the promise of revelation, knowledge, and wisdom. Revelation, knowledge, and wisdom. I'm going to enable you. I'm going to give to you. I'm going to impart to you understanding. You're going to speak things you never even thought you could speak. Words are going to come out of you, and, and, and understandings and, and wisdom and thought is going to come out of you that is absolutely superior to anybody you're going to encounter. So relax. When they call you into court, relax. You're going to be okay. I got you. I'm going to be with you. Holy Spirit is going to be in you. It's all going to be good. Don't you worry about a thing. And so he tells them not to worry or to be overly concerned with how they might defend themselves. You ever had to appear before anybody and and worry about how you're going to defend yourself? A boss or in school, you know, or court. We don't hear no stories tonight. How do you plead? You know, no, he said, don't worry. He said, because I'm going to give you words 
In other words, they wouldn't need, if they were hauled into court, they wouldn't need a defense attorney. Jesus himself was going to be their defense through the person of the Holy Spirit. Somebody say amen. Amen. Jesus is giving very, very detailed teaching. If you read verses 1 uh, all the way through the rest of the, the chapter down to verse 38, I mean, that's detail. And I would encourage you to read it. If you, if you haven't read that one lately, go ahead and read uh, John 20 or Luke 21. He gives very detailed teaching concerning what? Signs. He said, these are signs that things are going to happen. They're indicators. Watch this now. They're not indicators of when. They're only indicators of the fact that they will happen. He didn't say, when you see this one happen, well, then you'll know that, you know, six months later, I'm coming. No, 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 no. He said, no, I'm I'm telling you that all of these things are going to happen. They're indicators of the fact that I am coming. Not the timing, but that I am. Mm. This is a guarantee. He's saying that I'm coming back. Mm. So you don't have to worry. Is he coming back? (laughs) See, that was their issue. Is he coming back? That's why when he left, they're, <laughs> they're all standing on the on Galilee going, <laughs> looking up into the sky, watching him go. You know what their question was? Are you coming back? And it, it, said, they, it said they stood gazing. <laughs> they didn't go, oh, well, he gone now. All right. No, 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 no. And as a matter of fact, he said, he said, when I leave, you go do what I tell you to do. Well, guess what? They didn't. They just stood there. <laughs> you see him? He come to, oh, man, he disappeared behind the cloud. I can't even see him anymore. Oh, heck no. <laughs> they stayed there so long, an angel got to show up and go, men of Galilee, what are you doing standing here looking? I mean, that's the reality of it. An angel had to show up and go, what are you doing still standing here? Gazing up to heaven. He's coming back. He said he's coming back. He doesn't lie. Now, go get busy. Do what he told you to do. And so their whole issue is, you know, is he coming back? Is he coming back? So he says, look, when you see all these things happen, know this that I am coming back. The signs guarantee my return. And so these signs then, and we look at all of them and we read some of them, but you know what? The fact that he promised them wisdom and words, that was also a sign. The fact that he said, you're going to stand before people, and you're going to stand before powerful people, and you're going to stand before people who oppose you and contradict you and resist you, but when that happens, I'm going to enable you supernaturally by the power of the Holy Ghost to be able to say things that will not be resisted. That will be a sign. That's another sign I'm coming back. Why? Because i got to make you my witnesses until I come back. So the fact that I empower you and I enable you and I I equip you is a sign that I'm coming back. If if I wasn't coming back, I'd just be like, you know what, you're on your own. But the fact that I am coming back guarantees and validates what I'm telling you. I'm coming back and until I do... I'm going to give you words, and I'm going to give you wisdom to speak. All right. So this detailed teaching, all of this that we just looked at, and we continue to look at, it also concerns this one sign, this sign of being given words and wisdom. Everybody say words and wisdom. All right. They indicate his coming. He says, when... Verse 24 says, when the times of the Gentiles 
are fulfilled. When that draws near, all of that comes to culmination. He says, then it all gets shut down. But until then, until then, you're going to have this sign of my power and this enablement and this endowment and this understanding and this wisdom and this revelation. You're going to have it. Okay? Because why? Because we need it until the end. How many of you know you need it? Come on, somebody. You need it. You need that wisdom. You need those words. You need that understanding. You need that revelation knowledge in order to stand against all the nonsense that's out there. And he's coming back. Hallelujah. <laughs> Whew. Man, I don't know what I'd do if I, if I didn't know he was coming back. Amen. Amen. <laughs> One of these sweet days, we're going to be up and out of here. Hallelujah. But until then, we need stuff. All right. So Jesus, he promises them then an abundance of wisdom to know what to say. Understand that those words when he said, I will give you. Look at verse 15 one more time. For I will give you words and wisdom. How many of you know if he says, for I will, he will. That's a promise. So it's a divine promise that he makes. And he promised the disciples that they would have an abundance of wisdom to know what to say. And watch this. Not only what to say, but they would have an irresistible eloquence to say it with. Hallelujah. He said, I'm not going to let you stand up there and look like an idiot. I'm going to give you words. I'm going to give you wisdom. I'm going to anoint you. I'm going to empower you. I'm going to equip you. I'm going to enable you. I'm going to give you a grace that rests on you so that when you're called to stand and declare what I tell you to say, people are not going to be able to say, you know what? You're an idiot. You're a dummy. You don't know what you're talking about. Just shut your mouth. No. He said, I'm going to give you words. I'm going to give you wisdom. I'm going to give you what to say. And I'm also going to give you an eloquence to be able to say it with in spite of the opposition that you're going to meet with. Doesn't matter how powerful. Doesn't matter how smart. Doesn't matter how witty. Doesn't matter how brilliant someone might be. Doesn't matter how well versed they might be in their particular thought or their persuasion or their own uh, uh, religious thoughts or, or philosophy. He said, don't you worry. He said, I'm going to give you words and I'm going to give you wisdom and I'm going to enable you and equip you to thwart everything that comes out of your mouth, their mouth. And what you say is going to have more power than what they say. Jesus was telling them, I'm going to stand by you. I'm going to assist you. And this promise then was remarkably fulfilled after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Well, what's, what's the first evidence that it was fulfilled? Day of Pentecost. Peter, who can't even, you know, testify in front of a, a, a servant girl and a couple of soldiers... He can't even handle that while Jesus is being interrogated. And, and, he, and he denies Christ. And we know the story. He can't even handle that. But what? After the Holy Ghost comes and fills them with power from on high. And they're fueled with divine fire. Hallelujah. What does he do? He gets up in front of thousands. He couldn't stand in front of three. Now he's standing in front of thousands. And what happened? The Bible says what? 3,000 were added to the kingdom. So he got 3,000 for the three he couldn't. Ah, that'll preach all day. That'll preach all day. Hallelujah. God will restore you a thousandfold. Amen. Man, I've never even thought of that before. I'm going to preach that one of these days. So you got Peter... And, 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 and the effect that the disciples continue to have in those early stages of the early church. And then you come to uh, th this outpouring of the Spirit and Christ gives the disciples wisdom 
He gives them utterance. Their adversaries are not able to resist the force of what they say. Acts chapter 6, Stephen, the first martyr, is standing before all the Sanhedrin. Uh, Paul is there. He's Saul at the time. He's part of the Sanhedrin. He's, he's a Pharisee of the Pharisees. All of the intelligentsia of Israel is standing there all gathered together. And Stephen opens up his mouth. And Stephen, if you read the story, and you should, in Acts 6, Stephen preaches a sermon, man. I mean, the litany of stuff that he puts out there. He rehearses the entire history of Israel. I mean, that's huge. I mean, you know, it, listen to me. It's one thing, and, I, and I'm just going to tell you, you know, I'm a preacher. That's what I do. And so when I'm preaching, a lot of stuff will come to me that I never even thought about when I was preparing that message. I have about, I, I'll, I'll just be transparent. When I get up here to preach on Sunday mornings, I, I got a few notes in front of me. You could read them in literally about 32 seconds. I don't have printed out sermons. I don't have, I, I don't have you know, manuscripts. And, I, you know, and I'm, not, I'm not hating on people who do, you know. I'm just saying that's the way God brought me up. But I take 32 seconds worth of material and turn it into 32 minutes. Why? Because of the Holy Ghost. That's the gift of preaching. Are you understanding me? And a lot of times stuff will come to me. Most often it does. Things will come to me that I never even thought about. But I knew them back in the day. I learned them. I read them. I keep studying. I study the Word of God every single day. Okay. So when I'm up here... Stuff will come. Boom, it just comes out. And you think, oh, that he had that written down. No, I didn't. No, it just comes by the Holy Ghost. All right. So here's Stephen, who has heard by oral tradition the history of Israel. Number two, he's read the scripture. Shove somebody tell me, you need to read your Bible. And he stands up in front of these, 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 this aggregation of, of, of people, these religious people. And what does he do? He gives the entire history of Israel up until that very moment that he's standing there in front of them. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. And verse uh, in Acts chapter 6, it says, watch. But they could not stand up against the wisdom the Spirit gave him, Stephen, as he spoke. These are the Pharisees. These are the Sadducees. These are the Sanhedrin. These are all the smart guys. These are the, you know, wise guys. Everybody's there. And they've got all the wisdom of Israel. They've got all of the, the, the religious intelligence gathered together in one spot. And not one of them individually and them corporately could stand up against the wisdom that was coming out of his mouth. That's why they killed him. So they had to accuse him of blasphemy, which he didn't. They could not stand up against the wisdom the Spirit gave him as he spoke. Listen to me. When we bear witness to the gospel of Christ... Jesus' precious promise to the disciples repeats itself to encourage us to stand firm and to persevere. I keep hearing when I have to preach the gospel, if I have to stand against people who don't believe, if I have to stand in the face of opposition and, and where I go to, sometimes I go to, to different places and, and there's opposition there or I try and testify to somebody or witness to somebody or I'm called upon to, to, to give a reason and an answer for, for what I believe. I hear the promise of Jesus, the same one he gave them. Huh. Verse 15, what did he say? He said, but I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. Amen. And that promise echoes in my spirit. And it repeats itself over and over and over again. And not just in me, but in anybody who is willing to stand up and bear witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
That promise repeats and it encourages us to persevere, to stand firm, no matter how difficult the situation might be. Yeah, but I don't want to testify. I don't want to bear with those people are smart. Those people are this. Those people are powerful. Those people have authority. Those people have rank and privilege. And those people are this. And that. Jesus, don't worry about them. Don't even, don't even think twice about them. Because I'm going to give you words and wisdom. I didn't give them words and wisdom. I've given you words and wisdom. Hallelujah. Our proclamation of the good news, our declaration, our speaking of the gospel, the good news, will be affirmed and it will be validated by the Holy Spirit who will give us the divine wisdom to speak, listen to me, with an ultimate authority. See, what comes out of your mouth has authority. It has heavenly authority. It has divine authority. It has the verification and the validation of Jesus' promise to you. What we speak has divine authority, and the Holy Spirit will validate what we say. He will affirm what we say. He will give us the divine wisdom to speak with an ultimate authority that will make people who even who are in opposition to us stop and listen. They'll have to stop and listen to you. I'm not talking about standing on the 24th in mission with a signboard and say, you know, he repent. He's got that. I mean, if God calls you to do that, go do it. But most of the people who do that aren't, aren't. Are you hearing me? And that's why people walk right by him and go. Psh. But when you stand with divine authority, you stand in opposition to people. What comes out of your mouth will make them stop and listen. They won't even want to. But they'll be drawn. There's something about you, they'll say. You know what? I, 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 I've heard preachers. I've heard this. I've heard that. And I, you know, but, but there's something about you. There's something about what you're saying and the way you're saying it. I had to listen to you. I, I couldn't ignore you. I couldn't dish you. I couldn't walk by you and just say, yeah, whatever. I had to stop and I had to listen. So you and I can be confidently ready at any time. Hmm. For I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to contradict or to resist. Only on Sunday afternoons after you get out of church. After you heard pastor. No. Only after you fasted and prayed 32 hours. No. No. Anytime you are called upon to witness and bear testimony to the gospel of Jesus Christ, open your mouth and he promised to give you words and wisdom that nobody can contradict. You and I can be confident, we can be ready at any time to stand upon the secure and the specific promise. This is not a general statement. This is a specific promise made by Jesus. And we can stand upon that promise that he made. He promised to give us wisdom and he promised to give us words that will overcome any indifference and all opposition. To whatever it is, it's coming out of your mouth to his glory. Do you believe that tonight? Then if you do, say, if I do, look at somebody tell me, if you do, then it is incumbent upon you to look for an opportunity to open your mouth and speak words and wisdom. That they won't be able to contradict or to resist. If you believe that, stand to your feet and say amen. Amen. God, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you for the promise that Jesus made. We thank you for the assurance that you give to us. And we thank you that we can stand and testify and declare the truth of the gospel in the face of every adversary and every opponent to it. And you will 
give us words. And you will give us wisdom. And you will get the glory by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And amen.